everybody, this is Abby from Realistic Kitchen and Gardens, and today is uh, Thursday, August 31st. I believe we are six weeks away from our first frost of the year, and we're something like 13 or 15 weeks after the last frost in May. So here we are. My basil, my basil, my thyme is happy. Oregano is almost fully flowered. Um, again, parsley does really well at the end of the season for whatever reason. Um, I have to make up my mind what I'm going to do with this whorehound. The bees love it. Um, but as is with the mint family, it is voluptuous and excessive. And I also didn't realize it would get this big, so I really should have put... <laughs> Um, I really should have put the winter savory on the sunny side. But anyway, this sage continues to get gigantic, even though I pruned it into oblivion this spring. And this time is also doing very nicely, so I'm happy with that. Um, time to gather more chamomile, chocolate mint. Luckily, it doesn't flower that much. I'm really enjoying the chocolate mint. Um, it finally has achieved hot enough status for uh, Buckley. Buckley Red Oak Leaf Lettuce to bolt. And I'm tempted to let it go to seed and keep the seed so I can have free plants. Sweet basil. Uh, I think that's peppermint and spearmint. Ginger mint is continuing to do nothing mostly because it's competing so much with these chives, which are obviously in distress because they're flowering again. So, sunflowers continue to be dead and they will continue to die back and look worse. I'm deciding if I want to try to um, keep the stalks or not. These aren't, first of all, they aren't the straightest, and second of all, they aren't really the... Um, I don't know. I mean, they're quite sturdy, but we'll see how it goes. Some of these do have seeds left in them, but they're not grown to be um, like eating sunflowers. You can eat any sunflowers and sunflower heads, but um, I mean, the seeds are so small, it's not really even worth trying to dig into it that way. Um, I tore out the giant radishes that were taking over the world and now this nasturtium is taking over the world and there is still ooh look at all the seeds I should harvest all the nasturtium seeds for capers and pickle them this marigold looks uh spent to say the least I'll save these seeds because this one did amazing this year okay lemon balm to the size I want finally. We've been loving the lemon balm this year. Lemongrass, getting there. I don't think I'll really have a nice big bunch by the end of the season. This one's doing better actually. This was the one that was planted from, oh yeah, this was the one that was planted from a stock that I had in the store and it just rooted in water. This was the plant I got from, um, territorial seeds, but eh, I planted both of these late. I didn't get them in that early. Good King Henry, looking lovely. Maybe I'll actually try to eat this in the spring. My nemesis, Yarrow, continues to get bigger, creep, take over. We'll see. Um, Calendula continuing to be its usual self. Um, this is looking good. This I know it's hard to tell with all the green, but the lovage right here is looking really happy. This is lovage, a branch of lovage too, which is basically a shrub of celery. Say hi, chickens. Hey, Leo. Okay, let's get a good look of these cover crop rows. Uh, what you see is buckwheat. The white flowers are buckwheat. 
I have seen some radish in here, but most of it seems to be... Please ignore my ass of a rooster, Leo. Uh, big mushroom. I have seen some radish, but I feel like it's gotten killed off or smothered. Not killed off, but smothered. You know, with all the grass and that stuff. I keep looking at the dandelion greens and thinking it's radishes, but I think I've actually managed to kill groundhog radishes. That's impressive. Okay. Bit of change, I finally cleaned up a little. Here's the end view of the garden today. Not including these last ones. So, it's going to going to be roasting hot. Ooh, actually, before I continue with the garden, got this compost bin in and I mowed down this huge patch of um, basically weeds. It started as, um, yes, I will actually use the term weeds. Um, it started as actual flowers and then yarrow came in, like they're still um, a lot of cosmos came up, which were purposely planted, but they got, they, they did that. Those are cosmos too. They just got really big, blocky. That one's flowering down the end actually. Um, but then a lot of pokeweed came in. Actually, pokeweed is edible, but um, they need an extremely specific way of handling. And I don't have the time for that. Um, other large players in this patch ended up being uh, lamb's quarters, which the chickens love, so that works out, but, you know. Okay, back to the garden. Um, I'll replant that in the, either later in the fall or cover it with a tarp this fall and winter, and then in the spring, I'll replant it with actual wildflower seeds again, so we'll see how it goes. This dill I love this dill. Something about dill flowers are just so lovely. And I may very well save the seeds for this dill. Um, or, well, I did get a different variety that's supposed to be less bolting, but uh, we'll see about that next year. But anyway, uh, this is the semi-Hungarian, semi-hot block pepper. And I don't really know how to feel about this. Uh, I keep doing this with this opal purple basil. It's, um, it's very hearty. And interestingly, the Japanese beetles really didn't bother it. So that's a big benefit for me. But it's a lot more succulenty than true, like, thicker kind of, um, I don't know. Well, they are succulenty, but I couldn't defi define succulent for you. Um, like thicker, feels like they retain water. They're not quite as delicate, which is probably a good thing. But the dark color doesn't always impress me. Call me petty. Anyway, moving on. Um, Brussels sprouts. Ouch. Ugh, sorry. Um, here is the biggest one, as usual, the one on the end with the most light. Um, these I need to put, I don't think you guys will see that very well, but I need to put a taller netting on it so it can actually kind of grow, <laughs> grow to full height because one variety is supposed to get 24 inches tall and the other is supposed to be like 18 to 20. And I can't remember which is which, but there, they need more height. And the sunny patch with... This is one of the redarling Brussels sprouts, purple Brussels sprouts, uh, in a big clump of grass. Need to yank that out. And my official answer to waiting all this time for my parsnips, parsnip bed, is I have zero parsnips. So I think I'll put peas here. You know, little snow peas. Um, Carrots, though, carrots came up okay. Like, there's, here's one, 
Here's one. There's a good number of them. Like this is a good example of what it would have looked like if all of them came up. So like one, two, and actually there's a third one there in line two and the fifth one that's kind of out. But the seed tape didn't really work that great and it could have been my watering, it could have been, um, or lack thereof, my watering. Um, I could have planted it too deep. You know, the possibilities are endless. Um, and then the butternut squash continues to surprise me. So these are the original crop of butternuts that are looking really good. They're curing nicely, but they do still get marked with a fingernail, so they're not quite cured completely. Uh, but here is the second crop of them. So they're big and they're green, and they're actually just about as big, if not bigger, than... There's that... Well, you can't really see it because the leaf is in the way. There's the original giant one, and there's an even more giant one. Um, so, we'll see if the second round is able to make it or not. I, it may. We still have six weeks. It may. Um, also, I harvested my Kai Kai pumpkin. I haven't showed you guys yet. Because this is true powdery mildew. I don't think I've really had it in my garden yet so far. So here's a very light, lightly one, but it's a fungal disease of basically not enough airflow. And here's a couple really bad leaves that they look gray and dusty. Um, this is a good example because this down here looks decent and green, a couple little patches, but then as it gets up and more, it's just even more spotty and same, same here. You can see the film of the actual fungus on it. So um, I picked the two pumpkins that were on it. The original Kai Kai was practically ripe. I mean, it was almost completely orange in the spots it was supposed to be orange because, you know, it's striped. And the little one is soft and green, so, or not soft, but it's small and still completely green. But it's starting to sound hollow and we'll see if it cures. Let me go back over here and show you what I've done recently. I pulled the trigger and I cut all of the stalks down low to the ground for all the morning glories. So these will dry up and die off and let that side of the garden get light again because uh, at the moment it's completely shaded after like one o'clock which isn't great so I'll give you a look down here but basically tomato <laughs> so much chaos um I picked another round of tomatoes yesterday and I have salsa cooking um I'm debating if I want to try to let these ripen I know all of them won't ripen I there just isn't enough time before the first frost um, but what will ripen, I'll let ripen, um, cause ripe tomatoes are more worthwhile to me than green ones. But I think for the green ones, I will, um, try to make a batch of either piccalilli or, you know, something like that that uses green tomatoes. Um, piccalilli is kind of like a relish. My grandmother always used to, <laughs> she used to go out of her way to buy green tomatoes to make piccalilli. And I have to say, I don't think I've ever eaten it. So I don't even know what it tastes like. Anyway, we're back at row now C, because B is disappearing once the tomatoes are gone. And these are the sprouting broccoli. So I think the slugs are eating them because that isn't enough damage for those stupid worms, but I think this is three or four weeks or whatever in the ground. They're getting there. Baby steps. It's hard sometimes being plants, transplanting and all that. I think there's eight of those and they'll produce purple uh, florets, small florets instead of one big head of broccoli. And then 
I don't think you'll ever be able to get a good scale of what this actually is, but nasturtiums, all the perfectly round, well, all the round leaves like that are nasturtiums. And that area right there is hip high on me. So the peppers got decent sized um, pepper plants even though it was a struggle this year. And I also have a couple of good sized peppers. I'm waiting to see some color on these, mostly cause these are the, well, this is the gold one. This is the gold pepper because Prism was here, gold was here. And then I think I originally had four or five orange sun and Jupiter red peppers. Um, the last one died off. The second one was okay, and then I have two in here that are doing okay. Um, these are the Veller. I'm trying to think of the variety names. It's been a long day. Um, this is Veller green bush bean. So um, we'll see if they fruit. We're cutting it kind of close to the. Um, last frost for them. They kind of like it screaming hot, like sweet potatoes and peppers and all that. So there's that. And then I'll step over these to show you. This is my first orange sun and Jupiter mixed peppers, and it is an orange sun. <sighs> Bloody leaves, too many leaves. Abby. Okay, there you go. It's an orange one. So it's kind of a crappy pepper though, but I wanted to leave it to see it change. And it looks really yellow in here because of all the green light that's filtering through the plants. But, you know. I also wanted to show you, I love, I show these every time, but these pretty peachy, pinky nasturtiums, I love them. Okay. So much basil. I want to make more pesto this year, <clears throat> but I don't think I'll have the time to. But last year I apparently made my pesto in September, so there is still time and hope. Assuming I have the energy for it. Because, you know. I thought I got all these. You look alive still. We'll see. Um, this row is basically empty. I just need to pull off the nasturtium greens once they die and plant a cover crop in here in this row to kind of put back nutrients from peas and attempted cucumbers and whatever else I managed to grow in there. Um, okay, let me come on this side and then we'll go back to the celeriac. This is Waltham heading broccoli. So these will actually produce heads of broccoli, assuming they don't get too hot and bolt. There is, I think, it's either six or eight of them. And then the last thing I have to do in this garden is till these rows. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let that do what it's gonna do. Although I do need to use it next summer, so I'm not really sure. Um, but that's going to be garlic this fall and I need to prep this bed, this row here for potatoes in the spring. I'm definitely going to do more russets. That went really well. I'm going to probably do more Corolla. Those did really well. And I'm going to grow some red potatoes, like new style potatoes for a potato salad because we all have our particulars, and I prefer red potatoes for potato salad. All right, to finish us off, we're going to look at these behemoth celeriacs. I still haven't pulled out of the ground, but really need to before they become hollow. These are just... I'm so impressed with these. Um, <laughs> so these were planted... These were seeded in February. Uh transplanted in I think May because they're not supposed to get under 55 or allegedly they'll bolt, they'll flower 
And then I harvested the first one a couple weeks ago, the biggest one, which actually was next to the, it was originally right, like right here. It was next to the beans and it was very happy there. So I need to harvest those very soon. I may do that tomorrow morning. I managed to get a partial day off. I get the morning off because they're working me too many hours. Okay, we have a minute. Let's go look at the raspberries real quick. Oh, rooster. <laughs> I have a young rooster in the mix that needs to be handled. He keeps trying to bother the adult hens and the adult hens just keep correcting him. All right, so these are the raspberries. Ooh, look at all these nice fruit. I need to harvest some of these. Focus, focus, focus. I think we got there. Nope, there we go, we got there. So good. Um, lots of big pups. Next spring will be good. So there's three canes there, including, or not including the old one. And there's one good sized cane here, maybe two. Then there's, I think, five canes here. This one died. This one isn't doing great. This one died. This one died. This one died. This one died. And three good sized pup canes on here. So, should have a decent crop in the spring. And then. After these, I believe they'll fruit in the spring. I don't think they'll fruit this year. I think they have to overwinter first. Ugh, that one tasted like a tomato. That was not ripe enough. Um, I think they'll, I think they'll overwinter and then they'll fruit in the spring. Oh, I don't think you guys will be able to see this, but there's a, there's a big cobweb here. I think you got a little bit of it. It's all dusty. <laughs> all right, well, I'll stop my ramble. Oh, let me actually update you on something I have continued to forget to update you on this whole season is uh, this rosemary that I got as a started plant with everything else. Um, came with the lemongrass and, um, you know, all that stuff from Territorial. So this is ARP variety rosemary. So this is supposed to be a really cold hardy, um, that was a bug, uh, really cold hardy um, variety of rosemary. And I think I will put a cloach on it or some kind of, you know, terrarium-esque um, cover on it this winter. And it's on the south side of the house so it actually gets sun all day. Um, so we'll see if it makes it. If it does, yay. If it doesn't, then I can just buy another plant. Um, they have these available every year from as a live plant. Um, but if it doesn't make it, I should probably look at digging out some of this clay in this area or finding the area I want it, digging out the clay and putting in sand because rosemary natively grows in like Mediterranean areas and loves hot, dry, really well-drained things. Kind of like lavender. It grows well like lavender or the same conditions lavender likes. So I'll stop my rambling now. So if you like this kind of stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. And also follow my Facebook page, Realistic Kitchen and Gardens. Bye!